Today's topic is the burden of proof and explaining it to the jury in a clear and concise way so that they understand, and that's key. If the jury understands what the burden of proof actually is, that means you're one step closer to winning your jury trial. Now, I plan on giving you my secret sauce in this video, the explanation and the breakdown and the example that I use in all of my jury trial cases. In fact, I've used this in criminal cases and civil cases, and it has served me very, very well. In fact, I've had a prosecutor come up to me after jury selection, and he has decades of experience, and he said, Jarrett, I've never heard anybody present the burden of proof like that. I'm gonna steal it. Well, good news, you don't have to steal it because I'm gonna share it with you in this video. All you have to do, keep watching. Welcome to Law Venture. My name is Jarrett Stone, and as always, be sure to check out the freebies linked below. They'll be super helpful on your journey to becoming a better lawyer. Now let's talk about why you're here, how to explain the burden of proof to the jury, and more importantly, how to explain it in a way that makes sense to them and that also is just easy to explain. Now, the best way I know how to do this is to just give you the example. And when I give you this example, I'll most likely give it to you from the perspective of the party that has the burden of proof. But as you'll see, it's pretty easy to flip to the party that doesn't have the burden of proof. And in doing so, you can plug and play what you need to apply to your particular situation, to your particular case. And without further ado, here's the example. Now, I wanna take a couple minutes to explain a legal concept that can be a bit confusing at times. It's this phrase and this concept of the burden of proof. You may have heard of this before, but I wanna give you kind of the boiled down version first. My client, who's the plaintiff in this civil case, it's his job, it's his burden to prove his case, to prove his claims. And it's a job and it's a burden that he welcomes. You see, the defense will come up here and they'll make it very clear to you that they don't have the burden to prove the defense's case, that it's the plaintiff's job, that it's my client's job. Again, it's a job he welcomes. But I wanna make sure that this concept is just crystal clear. And the best way I can explain this is essentially through an example. Let's say that you're at the end of a road and this road that you're looking at is a mile long. Let's say it's raining and the road's a bit bumpy and we'll also say it's uphill. My dad will probably say it's uphill both ways, but for the sake of the example, we'll say it's uphill one way. And let's also say that while you're at the, at the end of this road, you are on a skateboard and it's your job to skate to the end of the road that's a mile away. I'm not sure about you, but one, I have terrible balance, and two, I don't think I've ever actually been on a skateboard, so there's no way I'm making it that full mile. There's no way I'm getting to that finish line. Now, alternatively, let's say that you're in a brand new Tesla, and even though it's raining, all you have to do is turn on the windshield wipers and just hit the accelerator, and boom, going one mile on a road that's slightly uphill and it's raining, that's a breeze. We, we do that all the time. Now, here's the concept. The vehicles, either the brand new Tesla or the skateboard, those are your facts in the case. That's your evidence that's being presented. And the facts and the evidence being presented in a case, they'll either get you to the finish line or they won't. They'll either get you to be, being able to satisfy that burden or they won't. And in this particular situation, you're going to see that the facts in this case, the burden that the plaintiff has is gonna be satisfied because the facts are like a brand new Tesla. It doesn't matter that, that it's raining. It doesn't matter that the road is bumpy. It doesn't matter that it's uphill and the defense is gonna try and provide all these other facts that make it difficult for this brand new Tesla to drive just one mile. But at the end of the day, whenever all the facts are presented, you're gonna see that it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple case. And that right there is the burden of proof. Now, what we need to talk about now is preponderance of the evidence and scene. I got a little tripped up there at a couple points, but I wanted to make sure that I did that in one take so that you could see how it could be delivered in one single take. And notice that you can also deliver this particular example 
one way or the other. Either you have the burden or you don't have the burden. And what you can do is you can twist the situation or the example to your particular situation. Let's say you have the burden, but you're the prosecutor. Well, the burden of proof is gonna have the same explanation because it's the burden of proof. But your transition at the end of that example, instead of going into the preponderance of the evidence to make that clear, what the extent of the burden, basically what the finish line is, that's going to be a separate analysis and a separate example. But don't worry, there's a video on its way so that you can clearly explain beyond a reasonable doubt. And that way, that is also crystal clear to the jury. And especially in a criminal case, that's going to be absolutely critical to convey and get that message across to the jury. So be sure to subscribe below so you can get that video whenever it comes out. Don't worry, it's on its way. On the other hand, if you're on the defense side, whether it's a criminal or civil case, you can use this example. You can use this road that I used in the other situation, the plaintiff situation, as a great way to show the fact that the facts, there's a lot of facts going on there, is basically like having a skateboard and it's bumpy and it's raining or it's snowing and it's uphill and it's like going up Mount Everest and you know the plaintiffs won't be able to get to that finish line. At the end of the day, the burden of proof is going to be the same exact thing whether or not you're on the plaintiff side or the prosecutor side or if you're on the defense side. What's important is you want to convey to the jury that it's all about the facts, that you basically can't rubber stamp a case across the board. The jury is going to have to do their job and look at the facts. Then it's your job as the lawyer, as the advocate, to portray those facts in a certain light. Whether you're on one side or the other, that's going to be up to your situation, but you can apply those facts to your case. And that's basically the example that I've used in all of my cases. And I typically use these examples during jury selection or voir dire. That way, if anybody has any questions about it, then I can try and answer those questions and clear anything up. And the, the sad part is, you know, even though I've done this example a ton of times, there's always the risk of not being clear enough to a particular person. They may have zoned out or maybe I was just having a, a bad day and I wasn't being very clear. And a great way to really bond with the jury or the voir dire panel members during jury selection is to maybe ask a jury member, okay, what's your favorite car? That's a simple question, makes them more comfortable, and they may say what their dream car is. And then in the situation where you have the burden, you can use that dream car situation, like the Tesla, in your example, and it makes it a little bit more of a personal touch. On the other hand, if you're on the defense side of things, you can ask the same question, what's your dream car? And you can basically show that this situation, this case isn't like being in that dream car in that Tesla, it's like being on a skateboard. And then what you can do with this burden of proof is then basically string it into your opening statement, just touch on it very br briefly. And if you weren't able to talk about it at all during jury selection, then at that point in time, talk about it during your opening statement. If you don't know how to structure your opening statement, don't worry, I got a video for that. The real power behind this example really comes into play during your closing argument. The jury, they've heard the facts, they've seen the case, they sat through everything, and it's your job as the lawyer to take portions of those facts and apply it to this particular example. And not only will that provide continuity to where the jury, they're familiar with this because they've heard this concept, this example during jury selection, during opening, and then finally again during closing, but they're also very clear on the concept and that's what's important. So whether or not you have the burden, you can explain, hey, the facts in this case because of X, Y, and Z, they're the same as being on that skateboard going uphill both ways in snow with potholes and they're just not able to get to that burden. They haven't satisfied it. That's why you need to rule in favor of the defendant. Alternatively, if you have the burden, then you apply the facts, show why it's basically a Tesla and how easy it is to get to the finish line. Then at that point in time, you go into why it satisfies the preponderance of the evidence or beyond a reasonable doubt or whatever burden you actually have in your particular case. Okay, that's all I got. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave those in the comments below. If you plan on using this example or if you think this example was super helpful, hit that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe. That's over there too. All right, I'll see y'all in the next video.